today to talk about building an in-house studio from scratch, which is basically what I've done for the last year and a half, uh, which is how long I've been at Fennec. So I walked into Fennec on Bond Street on my first day and was met by just a team of three people who managed the studios. So I feel like that's a really small team. <laughs> so uh, it was that small at that time just because it was a fairly small operation. So they only had three ways of bringing imagery onto the website. We had an in-house AI studio, but you only shoot fashion. Well, we can only shoot fashion on that. It's essentially a green mannequin on a green screen. Um, and that's just operated by one stylist. Then everything else would either come through a supplier imagery or we would shoot it at an external studio. So it was kind of managing that relationship with that external studio. But at the time, we had no control over the lighting or what freelancers they were going to bring in to shoot our product. And we had really minimum, minimal control over that styling as well. So being at Fennec for a couple of months, it became really clear that they were on a rebranding journey. And the aim was to attract a younger clientele and produce a really premium look across all of their products. I knew that this wouldn't really be easily achieved in that external studio. Um, so it was, became really clear to me that we needed to bring all of that in-house to have a stronger grip on our creative output. And I thought we could get some substantial cost savings in there as well. So I'm going to share with you my steps to successfully bringing that in today. So these are the areas I looked at, starting with creative, equipment, team, and space. So let's talk about creative first. So Fennec sells premium brands such as Vampire's Wife, Anine Bing, Ghani and MM6, just to name a few. So I wanted all the imagery to be really slick, punchy, product focused, and kind of create that in-store shopping experience, but online. This is the type of imagery we were working with at the time. I felt like it was a bit flat, functional, and kind of lacked that inspiration for our customer. We only had one to three pictures per product, so I felt like we needed a total refresh. We now shoot up to five images per product, including detail shots, which we never did before. So this is just an example of what we do for fashion. We lead with an invisible mannequin shot, and you'll see those on our PLPs. Then we've got our three model shots plus a detail on the model. So I've introduced a product-focused crop shot for the first image um, so that you can really get a feel for what that product is on a figure. Then our second shot is a full-length image with some styling bits in there just to really create you know, a vision and um, give that inspiration to the customer on how they can wear it. We've got a product focus back crop shot, which is a pretty simple shot, just a flat of the back on the model. And then our detail shot is just a close-in image of a USP for the product. So, you know, picking out things like what fabrics they've used, any stitching or anything else that we really want to show off. For bags, we start off with a still life image uh, just of the front of the bag, super simple. And then we go on to a back uh, shot, which is angled to show the depth of that product. We then follow that with an inside shot, because I feel like that's a really important part. You know, is there an internal zip, or what do the customer want to see inside? And then we follow that with a, another USP, so like a detachable strap or something else like that. And then on the end, we've got a model shot, which just shows off the scale of that bag. I feel like that's really important, because you don't know if you're going to buy something huge or small. You need to see it on that person. All of our other accessories are still life just at the moment. We do a front, back, and a detail, but I would love to get us to a place where we shoot that on model as well. So this is just a selection of what we're currently doing. All of our imagery now has a bit more purpose. It gives the customers more information and more inspiration on uh, that product to follow up with the sales. And then it generally shows a 360 view of that product as well. We've got a much larger focus on our styling, which is all based on our brand adjacencies, trying to build outfits within the same brand where we can. The lighting is punchier, 
Um, it gives a bit more life to the products. And yeah, I hope you all like it. So now I knew what uh, we wanted to shoot. I needed to figure out how we were going to shoot it. So talking about equipment, I've got a photography background. So I was able to gather this list together quite easily with a couple of um, contacts to help me as well. We already had a dam in Fennec, so I didn't really need to buy much storage, but I did buy in some physical hard drives, cloud storage, just to, so that we can keep all the raw files. But in terms of our um, lighting and cameras and everything, we opted for Canon cameras and pro photo lighting. We needed something that people were really familiar with just to get us off the ground. Um, video I knew wasn't yet on the horizon for Fennec, so I thought, we'll get something in right now that I know works. This is all the type of stuff that I've used when I was a freelancer, so I knew how to use it, and I could help anyone that we got in to make sure that we could actually get going. And then once I've got a full-time team on board, we could explore video down the line. Then I also bought sort of additional things like polyboards, black card, pins, all those kind of day-to-day -day bits that you're team needs to get the job done. So let's go on to talk about team. So to achieve this new look, I knew we needed a photographer, which would be a first for Fennec. We only had a stylist before. Um, so I spoke to buying a merch just to gather some forecasts on you know, what are our predicted numbers for uh, stock to be shooting, and then I could base our team off of that. So this is what we started off with. We only needed one photographer, just based on how much we were going to be shooting over the next year. And they would be on set five days a week. We then have a photography coordinator who quality controls all of that imagery before and after retouch, and also handles our supplier processes. We still have that in place for concession brands. Then we've broadened our stylist team to have three stylists. One of those is a senior. As you can see, I had quite a few direct reports, so I really needed someone on board who kind of knew what they were doing, could own that area, and then you know, brief that out to the junior stylist to make sure we could come together as a team. Then I've got two production coordinators, and they're the ones that call in the stock to shoot, schedule all of our shoots, handle all of our model and freelance bookings, um, and generally do everything with the stock. They're amazing. So this has evolved over time. You might have seen earlier this year, Fennec did a total rebrand. So this is our Quiet No More campaign that was out and about. It was built on having a Gen Z mindset, and we had a total new creative direction. So the studios played a huge part in our new website launch. All of our imagery changed from gray onto white. And to achieve this, we had to review and reshape our structure just to make sure that we could follow that new tone of voice. So this is what we look like today. We've split out the areas just so that we can have two specialist managers that really focus on each area to make sure that we're producing that premium look. So for me, I'm looking after the photographer, photography coordinator, and then production coordinator. And then our styling manager looks after our two stylists and our samples assistant. So this styling manager was really key in uh, this new rebrand because they can really focus on that styling area and really push that part of the imagery forward, which obviously plays a huge part in what it looks like. So as the studios grow, so will our team, because we're still in our first sort of stage. We're just a year old. At that time, we weren't in a place to bring all of our retouch in-house. Last year, it was all handled by our external studio at really high rates, so I needed to look into how we were going to do this, which led me to Pixels. So this is just a bit of an example of what kind of magic they work for us, but working with them, it significantly re reduced our cost per product and also our time to site SLA by one day. Another consideration was freelance. So I didn't want to rely on freelance too much. By bringing it in and building that full-time team, you can really establish consistency and have that quality there. With freelance, it's slightly harder to do that because it's lots of people coming in and out. 
but I knew we needed them to cover like peak periods or any sickness or holidays. So just from working in the industry, I've been in the industry for about six, seven years now. Um, I've got a little black book of contacts that I could get in touch with, but I also asked my production coordinator to advertise on like LinkedIn and other social media networks to bring in some fresh talent. So once the team was in place, we tested a lot. We needed some visuals to show the business exactly what they could expect from us. And even now that our creative guidelines are all set, we keep testing, we want to keep pushing those boundaries. We don't want to fall behind any of our competitors or any sort of trends that are new in the industry. So keep doing that. So lastly, I thought, where are we going to shoot all of this? Where are we going to build that studio space? The team at the time were based in the Bond Street store, which is quite small. There wasn't a lot of space for us to work with. Um, there was a lot of pressure from the business to actually open the studio in our main warehouse, which is up in Newcastle. But I knew we wouldn't really attract the right kind of talent or models to go all the way up there, unless we wanted to pay quite a lot to get them up there. So we started looking at uh, locations that Fennec actually owned. So this is the Fennec store down in Kingston, and this is the Fennec store in Brent Cross. We ultimately decided upon the Brent Cross store. This is for a few reasons. They had the space that we needed, including the ceiling height. It was on the tube map. It was on the North Circular Road. We've got a free car park. Lots of ways that people could actually get to us and we could bring the talent to us. But other than that, our store director in Brent Cross was really keen to support digital, and they're a great ally even to this day, continuing to support our ever-changing needs for the studio. We've got five different areas that are still a bit of a work in progress, um, but it's important to build a space that's quite agile so that you can you know, move with any business demands. So this is what we started with a year ago. Anything in orange is the studio and then anything is green still own, uh, was still owned by the rest of the store. So we've got our AI studio still in uh, the back studio just there, and then next to that is our studio stock hold room. So anything that wasn't physically on set, we'd pop in there just before it was about to be sent back on our really small prep room. <laughs> Then the rest of it was our model studio, which was quite big, lots of space to have lots of rails in, models in, and do all of that. And then we had two tabletop sets within the same room just off of there, and then a teeny tiny studio office as well. We soon realized that that prep room was not big enough for, for what we were doing. So we've been really lucky to expand into this space here, which is now adjoining to our model set. So because of this, and we've also linked with other teams within the digital team, like Product Lifecycle, who do all the enrichments, they come over a lot now and work with us. So our kind of need for table space has expanded. We've moved our studio's office into our old tabletop room. So you can see that there. And then we've got our model set with a tabletop set next to it. Like I said, that room's huge, so we can do a lot with the space. Another tabletop set next door, and then a really large space for prep and stock storage. We then uh, made our old office into our equipment and styling wardrobe, so it's nice and separate. The stylist can use that kind of room as a bit of a getaway to rack up for the next day. And we've still got our AI studio there as well. Like I said, though, this is a, still a work in progress. We're going to be changing things in the new year as well. So keep posted on that. I'll probably post some things on LinkedIn. But by bringing everything in-house, we can support the company in more ways as well. So since opening the studios, we actually have worked really closely with the marketing teams to create kind of that smaller scale content for use on digital marketing purposes or like homepage. Here are just some of the examples that we've done. This is really useful to the business as well, because it saves them studio, external studio and team hire costs. But it's also a plus for me, like Fatima said earlier, actually. Ecom can be really repetitive and kind of get a bit boring if you're doing that consistently. 
So this really allows my team to flex their muscles, try something new, and stretch their skill set. So from opening our studios back in October 2022 to now, we've done a huge amount. This is just a bit of a roadmap <laughs> of how we've done all of that. Um, but since bringing it in-house, Fennec have a better control over their creative output. We've achieved substantial cost savings, help time to site, um, but also we're supporting the business in other areas, for, uh, you know, like the creative, like I said. So my advice for you is if you are looking to bring a studio in-house or maybe build a new studio and expand on that, you need to analyze the key areas and put strategic decisions in place to make sure that you can achieve these. So creative, what's your tone of voice and what's your vision? Equipment, how will you make all of that happen? Team, who do you need to make that happen? And then space, where is it all gonna take place? For a business plan, you need some other things, you know, like cost savings, visuals, all of that kind of stuff. Consider, you know, how you're gonna make it feasible to win over the right people. Um, but also consider subsequent outcomes. For us, it was that creative um, that we're helping out with. But for you, it might be something different. But you've gotta be flexible. There's all, a lot of twists and turns. Um, but also, have fun with it. So that's it. Thanks, guys. And thank, thank you. you for sharing. Good. Let's jump right in to some Q&A. Videos. Yes. I think we're going to hear a bit about that later as well. <laughs> Do you want to do videos? And if so, how are you or how would you be approaching that? So we've only recently got the capability to do the videos on the site, so it's a super new thing for us to even think about. Um, the short answer is yes, we do want to do it. We're not entirely sure how yet. That's a project for next year, but I'm going to really get involved my team to see what we can do for that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Moving on to the next one here, was there anything you really wanted to include in this new studio, but it was not a good fit for the business needs or the budget? What kind of constraints did you run into there? Yes. <laughs> so, being premium product and, you know, assessing our competitors and all of that, I felt like it would be really good to have, um, like, an elevated e-com for certain brands but it didn't really fit the needs for the business at the time. It could be something that we look into in the future, yeah. but um, it didn't fit at the time, and also obviously getting in those extra sort of backdrops and testing and all of those things would have stretched our budget, so okay. we haven't done that yet. No, but yeah. you're looking into it? Next year. Next year. Hopefully. Good. Well, 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 yeah, because we do see that elevated stuff is picking up, and we see more it and more is, companies yeah. doing that on the yeah, e-com yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. On average, how many products does the studio shoot per day? So, ooh, on average across our sets, we probably shoot an average of about 50 um, per day. It's quite a small scale studio still, um, but yeah, about 50. Okay, yeah. good, cool. This is, I guess, uh, touching a bit on not just the elevated, but even more than that, editorial. Could your team also shoot editorial campaigns, or would that need other resources? I think we'd need to grow our team, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think the team have the capabilities there, you know, if we point them in the right direction, but we just don't have enough people at the moment to, to really make that a reality. No. Yeah. You think you would need to establish a new <coughs> department, a new function for that, or how, there how is, would um, you...? There is a visual content department within Fennec, but yeah. it's essentially two art directors. Yeah. Um, so they create the concept and then take that externally. So they sometimes bring that internal for us to kind of shoot, like we've done Mother's Day, Father's Day, that, those kind of like campaigns. Yeah. But our most recent Christmas campaign was all done in the external studio. So they do have that 
sort of other team to, to really take okay, that on. To yeah. lean on. But they just don't have the photographers in-house to do that. But if we grow our team, obviously, we could take that on board. Yeah. Maybe that's the next thing for you. Uh, I mean, it might be in a plan. Okay, good. <laughs> you talk about AI and AI studio. What, what, yes. what, what does that, in, in, in your context, what, what does that mean and what kind of tools, applications, yes. solutions are so you using? Our AI studio is essentially a green mannequin on a green screen. And the way the system works is it's all built in. Um, it's really easy to operate. One person can do it from a computer, basically. Um, and then we have like a library of pre-photographed models, as well as everything fashion-wise we've ever shot on there so that we can kind of dress up the model. Yeah. I kind of describe it like The Sims. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, dressing up your avatar, but obviously it looks more realistic than The Sims did. Yeah, good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Now, when you look back, right, it's a year and a half, a little more than that, since you started up. Yes. If you had, if you'd had some more budget, is there something where you're thinking, oh, in hindsight, that would have been nice. Yes, probably two things. Yeah. I would have bought more equipment. More equipment. Yes, so we kind of bought the essentials, I would say, to get us off the ground. But with the changing kind of aesthetic and bringing on more um, creative shoots, yeah. we need slightly different equipment in order to achieve some of those briefs. So we hire some stuff in from time to time. So yeah, definitely would have bought more equipment in and I probably would have spent a bit more budget on actually sprucing the studios up, you know? Okay. Like, we obviously did a paint job, but we want to make it look and feel really pretty in there and like yeah. a really nice way, uh, place to work, so. What, what, what thing's more equipment? Another thing is maybe also different equipment. I'm yeah. thinking like continuous lightning for video, maybe, exactly, or yeah. something like that. And like a studio workflow tool to kind of make things a little less manual, but yeah. I think that's all kind of, Things to think about for next year, but looking back in hindsight, definitely like get a bit more equipment in that you think you're going to need, just because things do change. Yeah, good, cool. Um, you talked a bit about retouching. Have you outsourced all of that, or do you run? I would it's about to say a hybrid model between an internal department and the outsourced model, or how do you do that? All of our e-com is done through Pixels, and they're amazing because they get it back to us at 9 a.m. the day after the shoot. So, yeah, <laughs> so yeah it's, uh, it's uploaded and on the website the day after we shoot yeah. it, which is amazing. Yeah, just for the record, we didn't ask Morgan to say that. But I'll <laughs> I know. <coughs> but I'll buy you a beer at the free <laughs> happy hour. <laughs> that didn't come out right, did it? <laughs> well, whatever. Good. Looking at the studio floor plans from the old to the new, how much better is the new one with all rooms being next to each other in terms of productivity? And if you had had the option of like building something completely new, is there something you would have done dramatically different from what you can, what, what's, what's possible today? I mean, if I had the money there now, I'd just knock all the interior walls down and it would be just a big space. I think that would be brilliant. Um, but yeah, it's so much more productive now because you're not kind of going around in big corridors and stuff like that. You can literally just jump into each room as they're next door to each other. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's helped massively. Good. Yeah, because I guess productivity is two things, right? One thing is the logistics. Yeah. And the other thing is being able to do knowledge sharing yeah. and tell what's going on here, oh, exactly. and what, right? Making sure that that works. Yeah, I think sometimes as well, you have a team on set and you might get a really difficult product through and they just don't know what to do with it. And now you can literally just nip, st nip next door, ask, I don't know, the senior stylist or the styling manager, whatever, and see, you know, how would they shoot that? And you can get your answer kind of instantly. Yeah. Whereas before it would be, oh, I've got to go all the way around to, to yeah. find that person. So you've broken down some of those silos. Exactly, and it's yeah. nice as well. I know I said I'd knock all the walls down, but we have all the doors open a lot of yeah. the time, so yeah. everyone can just chat to each other. Okay, good. Yeah. So maybe a little less uh, gatekeeping around the yeah. office. <laughs> good. Is your styling manager specific for e-com, uh, and how do you deal with styling when main stylists are not available? Yes, yeah, so yes, they're specifically e-com, but 
they are working with the wider business to set up some sort of rules for how we style as a whole. Um, and then if, the main, if our full-time stylists aren't there, we get freelancers in, but we've got our kind of brand bible on all of our computers, so it's quite easy to see. Um, the styling manager's great as well. He'll, you know, um, go and chat to a new freelance stylist, make sure that they understand everything that's required of them on the day, and yeah. So on, so on. Yeah. Good. Exactly. Yeah. Good. You talked about maybe moving into some more lifestyle elevated kind of stuff and maybe also increasing your econ productivity. Mm -hmm. What are like the way you look at it right now, what are then your biggest barriers to actually do that? Cost, money. Cost. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And probably team as well. We need yeah. more people, um, you know, share more knowledge and, you know, get those the right people on board really to make sure that we can do it to a really good high standard. Good. Yeah. The right people on board. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Definitely. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank Morgan. You. Thanks.